The next anomaly is Pickled Punks, aka SCP-3717. Item, SCP-3717, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. Outside of testing, all instances of, of 3717 are to be kept together in a small humanoid containment chamber within the low security wing of Site-17. Media devices provided to 3717 must be voice controlled. Twice daily, one scoop of powdered baby formula is to be sprinkled into each instance's jar. Instances, instances are permitted to select from available Available flavors, personnel assigned to this task, are encouraged to engage 3717 in conversation and report any requests or concerns to Dr. Valdez. Psychiatric se sessions are to be conducted on a bi-weekly basis. As an incentive for cooperation, 3717 may be placed on a customized secured dolly and taken on excursions around their containment wing. Supervised interaction with other residents of Site-17 is permitted. Description. 3717 is the collective designation for three stillborn malformed infants preserved in glass jars filled with an anomalous solution of a formaldehyde and an anointed fluid. Although dead on a cellular level, each instance possesses adult-level human intelligence and sensory capabilities, which do not appear to be impeded by their fluid environment. 3717 are capable of producing speech by inducing their jars to emit sonic vibrations uh, via the, an unknown method. Instances are also capable of limited movement within their jars. Powdered food placed within their jars appears to be absorbed through the skin though no waste products have been observed to be ex excreted. This is claim that, that they will suffocate if removed from their solution. This is of 3717 do not appear to require oxygen. The solution they kept in is also unoxygenated. This has not been confirmed via testing. Dash 1 is a hermaphroatic infant that appears to possess Craniotomy, hermaphroditic, infinite. Yes, that means it has uh, a mix of both male and female. Ah, infant that appears to possess craniotomy, tommy, scars along the top of its head. Neuroimaging has revealed that Dash 1's cranium is filled with several marbles. Dash 2 is a male infant missing left half of its cranium with its brain having been replaced with a, a mass of dust, lint, dead skin cells, and spider webs. Dash 2 claims it was born without a brain and an unusually large dust bunny was the only on-hand substitute at the time. Notably, neither Dash 1 or Dash 2 seems to suffer any cognitive impairment because of their missing brain matter. Dash 3 is a pair of female Syncephalus conjoined twins, fused at the face and head, but possessing separate bodies. Skin pigmentation is entirely absent. It is unclear, possibly even to itself, whether Dash 3 possesses a singular consciousness or two distinct but similar minds. DNA analysis of 3717 has revealed that they are genetically human as well as half siblings, all possessing the same father. Recovery. 3717 was discovered inside the leather strong box on the redacted county fairgrounds by Mole Task Force Kappa 14. Ah, Sideshow Bob. Who are investigating reports of recent GOI 2 233 activity. Adjacent promotional material referred to 3717 as Papa's Precautiously Provocative Pickled Punts. Alright, before I continue, what's GOI 3223? Herman Fuller Hub. Oh, Herman Fuller's Circuits of Disquiety. Oh, that's what that group of interest is. Good to know. 
National Containment Interview. Interviewer, Junior Researcher, Luna Valdez. Interviewees, 3717. Begin log. Dr. Valdez. Lolda, my name is Dr. Valdez, and I'll be overseeing your containment for the... Dash one. I want my phone call. I beg your pardon? I know my rights, Essie. I want my phone call. Prisoners don't actually have legal right to a phone call. It's just a common courtesy. More importantly, this is not the prison. Think of it more like a long-term care facility. Your health and well-being will be our utmost. The people make wine in the toilets. It's been known to happen. Yeah, we're in prison. I demand a lawyer or an actor who is so method they actually got a law degree. You're not being charged with anything. You're not imprisoned or here to help. Then why are you behind bulletproof glass? It's just standard procedure for new anomalies. We don't know what you're capable of. We're freaking babies. We're in jars. Childproof jars to boot. I realize you're likely harmless, but we need to need to do some observations and tests before we... Oh god, they're gonna vivisect us. We're in Harry's Harlow's lab. No, I assured you, all the tests will be minimal and invasive. A biopsy will be the worst of it. For the moment, I'm just gathering some intel on you. God almighty, they told us Essie was evil, but I never thought he would step, step to waterboarding babies. Trust me all you want, I'll never crack. Stoop, not stop. Oh, stoop. Ah, right. No one is going to hurt torture you. I'm just going to ask a few questions, and you're free to answer them or not if you choose. My first question is how did you end up in the circus of the Discordian? I guess you could say we were born to it. None of us remembers anything from waking up in these things. Did you never ask where you came from? Oh, sure, tons of times. Everyone would say that after having some fun with our later friends, sometimes they'd have an accident. And she would come home trying to get some money out of my board. I ain't saying they were gold diggers, but they weren't messing with no broke. Sprats. Sprats. You, you can't say that. We've been over this. A woman said that we were less a man would flee. Or will succumb to manacles of matrimony. He saw an opportunity. At the point his lady friend in her place, as he called it, he'd take her to the amazing Zoltan, or alchemical consultant. After razzmatazz, the lady would have no cause to pester him for money, and he'd have brand new attraction. We've been disgusting visitors in the den of freaks ever since. Not saying that you're all. The aborted bastards of Herman for dear old dad. Not that we were ever allowed to call him that. He wasn't all bad, though. He did teach us some barbershop songs. I'm sorry. Barbershop songs. Hit it! <laughs> Jerry, do you want to sing the song? Uh, Jerry? Did you step away? Oh shit, I forgot I was muted. <laughs> oh, Mary, I'll sing it again. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice thing. <scene. laughs> okay. At three, two, one, Mr. Sandman, bum bum. Bring me a dream. Bum bum, make him the cutest that ever. Bum 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 bum, give him two lips like roses. And bur, bum bum, then tell him that his lonesome. Mr. Sandman. <laughs> nice, you Jerry. You didn't join in. Huh? You didn't join in. 
<laughs> it's supposed to be multiple voices, you little sh- Ow! <laughs> whoops! I think. Oh, whoops! It's supposed to be three voices! It's one voice! Don't worry, in the edited video, I just copy your voice the muscle time. I just make your voice higher pitched. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jerry. I'm sick, so my voice is not doing high pitch. Good luck doing that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jerry. That's fair. Anyways. That's sufficient. I don't need a demonstration. That was your act at the circus? Not at first. I don't want it. Us the great people out. But after he got the boot, Icky reimagined the den a little. She wanted the freaks to proudly display their talents. Wanted us to be proud of what we were. Have some dignity. We like to sing, so she let us sing. Speaking of talents, do you three have any active anomalous properties we should know about? I... I may have been Grover Cleveland in two non-consecutive past lives. Sorry, Doc. No magic powers here. What you say is what you get. I think literally talking and saying... Yeah. Any special needs? We're able to meet the most reasonable work class. Does a mind control fusion powered mech suit count as reasonable? No. Fine, it can be fission powered, but I'm not responsible for disposing of the radioactive waste. An ounce of formula twice a day is all we need. A little company now and then wouldn't go unappreciated either. We're good with people. Well, mostly, but Spratz does sometimes get on people's nerves. He goes a, a little heavy on the dead baby humor. We're dead babies. It's appropriate. You know, life wasn't half bad at circus. At least not under Icky and Manny's rule. People would take us for walks sometimes, decorate our jars, and Molly liked to read to us when she visited the den. I'll miss Yumi's flowers and Quincy's butterflies. But not Gabriel's fish. I hate it when he stuck those slimy bastards in my jar. You don't think they, they left us behind on purpose, do you? They just left in a hurry. You heard my name's shouting. SCP is coming. She's been essentially worried about Essie ever. Essie since. Well, just lately. Our box is easy to overlook. We can talk about your associates at the circus another time. I understand this may be difficult adjustment, but I assure you that you will be treated just as well here, if not better. Then you are at the circus. Once you've finished our assessments, you might even be cleared to interact with fellow residents. Show me the biggest guy here. I'll shiv him. Show him who's boss. Find the circus stuff. <laughs> Final second stuffs and results will result in solitary confinement and psychiatric assessment. And the biggest guy at the site is an immortal, invisible, thermatological cyborg. So you make sure my mech suit can take him, right? End log. Alright, that's it of the anomaly. Alright. How bad is the thumbnail? Oh! Is it okay? It's not as bad as the previous ones. Let's see? That's still inaccurate. Yeah. Four. Yeah. I mean, the it was. Girls, huh? The girls are only fused at the head. 
and big girls, but we don't know if it's two minds or one mind, and they don't get Right. All right. Let's see. Did I keep that ice? Yep. They did. I'm going to double check, make sure to use the right one. Well, I would. If the license was still here. You did your best? Yeah. Wait, when was this? Oh. This was recently updated. In April 2022. And this was uploaded February 2022. Just thought I might say that. Oh. Alright, anyways, in 3, 2, 1. Take him away. Keep searching. Take everything you find back to HQ. Damn it. They had been moments too late. It wasn't the first time Klaus had missed him. What the fuck? He was trying to make sure it would be the last. God damn it, not but the clowns now, again. They had quite the assortment of characters and objects, but not the man himself. Looks like we missed him again. Yeah, he's always one step ahead of us. Dr. Klaas, we've got something you need to see. Just take it back to HQ. I'll look at it there. I think you might want to see this first. We're not quite sure what to do with them. All right, lead the way. They entered a dark tent near the back of what was left behind from the circus. Near the end of the tent, they could make out three faint glowing lights. As they got nearer, it became clear they were jars. Three malformed fetuses floated within them. Okay, there's some sort of creepy dead babies. Why couldn't you just have brought them back to HQ? That's just it, sir. I'm sure I heard them laughing. Kloss bent down to have a closer look. I'm not seeing anything. I know, but it's fine. Take them back and put them into containment. I'll have a closer look later. Welcome back. Today, oh my I bring God. you SCP-3717, Pickled Punks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Come join my Discord, too. Everything's been categorized, sorted, filed, and locked up. Except for your babies. My babies? Those three in the jar, remember? Oh, right. They seem safe. I mean... They're dead, right? Oh, let's go have a look at them, shall we? Those are what the fuck? nasty. They are pretty nasty, eh? They aren't pretty nasty. They aren't even just dead baby nasty. They want to keep, the, keep these many anomalies close together. Yeah. One of them is literally a girl. Yeah. Nasty. They're a whole new level of nasty. I know, right? Like, what's going on with this one? It's got some sort of brain oh, incision, know. and I'm not even... <laughs> what was that, Jerry? They're being assholes to the dead babies. Yep. I'm gonna talk about what's going on down there. That ain't even the half of it. This one's missing half his brain. And this one, I mean... Okay. That's just about enough out of you two. Klaus and Chen took a step back. Oh, it was speaking. <laughs> so, you're alive after all. <laughs> yeah, bud. We got feelings, you know. You ain't the most handsome fella either, you know. You ever heard of a suntan? You're paler than my sister's back there. What the fuck? <laughs> He's got you on that one. Oh, you think that's funny, do you? The guy who spends the income of a small country at the hairdresser each week. What the Close fuck? Let out a snicker. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe we got off on the wrong foot. I'm Klaus, and this is Agent Chen. Yeah, yeah, we know about you SCP creeps. Go suck an egg! Right. Perhaps we should all cool off a little yeah. and pick this up a bit later. Kloss sat at his desk with Chen as they rolled in. Oh my god. Careful! Those jars are fragile. Set them over there. You know, 
This place isn't even two star. The food is awful. The service is atrocious, and the scenery is bland at best. Well, you know we can change all of that. We'd be happy to, in fact. Oh, yeah? Well, now you're talking. Just tell us about the Circus of Disquieting. Come on, Doc. We told you before. Not There's the nothing else was. to say. No, it wasn't. What, what the fuck? What about Fuller? I know you know more than you're telling me. I told you before. We hardly saw the guy. We dealt with Manny most of the time. <laughs> what? Fine. Then tell me a little more what about the circus and what you... I don't know. For some reason, I feel like such a count of violence. <laughs> They're literally babies, no matter how smart they are. Did there? Not all that much to tell, but sure. Why not? The three fetuses were exhibited inside the den of freaks. Unlike the other tents, which were red and gold, this one was purple and green. It had a sickening feel to it. The three of them sat upon a table in the middle of the tent. Oh my god, what is with by, the female clown? Them and shrieking in disgust. It was the only life they had known. When they had first awoken to life, they had already been sealed inside these jars. The ringmaster himself, Herman Fuller, was an unkind man. They didn't see him often and spoke with him even less. It was likely better this way, for their own sake. Manny had always been a friend to them. After all, he was a freak like they were. This was their life, and it hadn't changed until the day they were left behind when the SCP Foundation had shown up. They had come before, but this time, something had gone wrong. They were unsure if it was intentional, or perhaps in the rush and the chaos, three little jars were simply overlooked. And that's all we know! Are you sure you can't tell me anything more about Herman Fuller, your relationship with him? I told you, Doc. We didn't have one. All right. Uh, I'll see that you get a tour of the facility tomorrow, and someone will be in to have a chat with you tomorrow. Nice, Doc. Thanks. What they the took the fact? three fetuses back to their the containment cell. What do you make of them? I don't think they're telling us everything. We've got time. Work that. They just changed the entire interview. Yeah, they turned it into threatening. And at the end, the deal they got wasn't even. Yeah. Income, which was, we will treat you good. You're literally baby. Mm -hmm. I trusted. Get nice and cozy, and they'll start to spill the beans. My thoughts exactly. Chen slept soundly in the barracks. It had been a long and eventful day. Sleep couldn't have come soon enough. The barracks lights lit up as a siren came to life. What? Intruder, intruder, intruder. Chen jumped out of bed, heading for his uniform. What's going on? Seems there's been a break in, sir. Where are they? All zones are showing clear. Seems like they're gone. Any casualties? Missing anomalies? No injuries, but they went into the fetus's cell. Okay. Let's get to the security cameras. As Chen sat down in front of the TVs, Why? a tired looking God clock damn it. came into the room. What is with the fucking clown? What happened? Sit down, let's find out. On the TV screens, a large man came into focus, walking what through the, the corridors, his head upside down. He came to a stop in front of the fetus's containment cell. He slowly dissolved into a mist and reappeared inside the room. Finally, Manny, where you been? It's not an easy place to get inside, you know? Yeah, yeah, let's get out of here. Dead missus? Mr. Fuller <laughs> eagerly awaits your return. <laughs> SCP-3717 is a collective designation for three stillborn, malformed infants preserved in glass jars Don't know. filled with an anomalous solution of formaldehyde and amniotic fluid. Although dead on a cellular level, each instance possesses adult-level human intelligence and sensory capabilities, which do not appear to be impeded by their fluid environment. SCP-3717 are capable of producing speech by inducing their jars to emit sonic vibrations by an unknown method. Instances are also capable of limited movement within their jars. 
powdered food placed within their jars appears to be absorbed through the skin, though no waste products have been observed to be excreted. Instances claim that they will suffocate if removed from their solution. This has not been confirmed via testing. SCP-3717-01 is a hermaphroditic infant that appears to possess craniotomy scars along the top of its head. Neuroimaging has revealed that SCP-3717-01's cranium is filled with several marbles. SCP-3717-02 is a male infant missing the left half of its cranium, with its brain having been replaced with a mass of dust, lint, dead skin cells, and spider webs. Notably, neither SCP-3717-01 or O2 seem to suffer any cognitive impairment because of their missing brain matter. SCP-3717-03 is a pair of female syncephalus are you shaking? twins. Skin pigmentation is entirely absent. It is unclear, possibly even to itself, whether yeah. SCP-3717-03 possesses a singular conscience or two distinct but similar minds. DNA analysis of SCP-3717 has revealed that they are genetically human as well as half siblings. Yeah. Links, all possessing yeah. the same father. Outside of testing, all instances of SCP-3717 are to be kept together in a small humanoid containment <laughs> chamber like so. within the low security wing of Site-17. Media devices provided to SCP-3717 must be voice controlled. Two daily, one scoop, 28 grams of powdered baby formula is to be sprinkled into each instance's jar. Instances are permitted to select from available flavors. Personnel assigned to this task are encouraged to engage SCP-3717 in conversation and report any request or concern to Dr. Valdez. Psychiatric sessions are to be conducted on a bi-weekly basis. As an incentive for cooperation, SCP-3717 may be placed on a customized secured dolly and taken on excursions around their containment wing. Supervised interaction with other residents of Site-17 is permitted. SCP-3717 were discovered inside of a leather strong box he showed on the, the female county SCPs. fairgrounds by Mobile Task Force Kappa-14, A. Saicho Bob, who were investigating reports of recent GOI-233 activity. Adjacent promotional material referred to SCP-3717 as Papa's precociously provocative pickled punks. Though parents might sometimes seem mean and unloving, be sure not to confuse concern for your well-being with bad intent. As always, have a care. What is with this goddamn clown? <laughs> I don't know. Alright. <laughs> Removal of characters slash license. They did cut out Luna Valdez. What was that? They cut out... They cut out... Uh, researcher Luna Valdez. Oh, uh, yeah. So they cut out a woman. Wait, right, I've been at the bottom category as well as the top one. That'd be two categories. <laughs> oh. So a three because they got the. Yeah. They, they cut out a character and let's face it, they changed so much out the the people that were taking care of the babies previously too yeah and only one of the babies was talking yeah which is weird all three of them yeah only the boy spoke not the intersex one mm -hmm. no girl can have a voice there i guess yeah anyways um, added gore or violence? <laughs> Deviates from the plot of the article. That definitely did. Yeah. Hmm. Gore? Yeah. I mean, they originally, I mean, not the original, they uh, eventually added it at the end, but it wasn't the same. Yeah. 
only men in the video slash offensiveness. They literally cut out all the. Yeah. Uh, what did you say, Jerry? They cut out all the women they. Mm -hmm. And they didn't let the fetus speak. And the only women that they did add were for uh, the, the boogles. Yeah, so are you saying four again? Four. Yeah. That I mean, leaves. Do you think it's lower? No. That's yeah. a 5%. Well, you know what? We had two twenty percent, of course. Yep. All right. Now it's got ending soon because of how late it oh, is. Why did they suggest they would have Luna? The. Yeah. Yeah, you notice, although it was clickbait, even showing Luna Valdez was clickbait. Yep. Because she wasn't in the video. <laughs> yeah. 